What's up YouTube, Ian Sandusky from Let's Machine, back here again for Practical Machinist, and welcome to Shop Talk. Before we get started here, make sure you like and subscribe below if you want to see more videos. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so today we're going to be talking about, again, kind of something that's on everybody's lips and something that's affecting us all, and it regards COVID-19. And that is... I know a lot of you guys have been furloughed. I know a lot of people are on, are on reduced hours. I know people have been laid off. I know plants have shut. So today we're gonna to be talking about some things you can be doing and things you can be doing at home to help keep yourself busy and things you can do while you're laid off. First and foremost, the most important thing to do is keep yourself in some kind of a routine. I know it's very easy to try to slip into a you know, 10 a.m. till 2 a.m. schedule, you know, you can turn into a night owl a little bit. But first off, personally, I, when I have time off, like to keep getting up at the same time every day. It helps keep you in a routine and makes the eventual shift to work back a lot easier that way. Um, then you're just dealing with getting back to work. You're not also dealing with trying to reset your sleep schedule. Um, sounds like a little thing, but it's a big thing that keeps you on track. It also helps keep your mind a little more focused because you feel like you're on a routine. The second thing to do, and this is something everybody should be doing when you have some time off and time to yourself anyway, besides, you know, relaxing and all that good stuff. But there is an absolute dearth of good material out there online to be able to develop your skills. This is a perfect time if you are furloughed or laid off to try to learn some new stuff. The first thing you can learn is a new program. Um, I'm not gonna name them because there are more out there than I could possibly get into. But most of us have one primary system, CAD CAM program or modeling system that we're good at. Um, I have mine, I'm good at one or two. Uh, most guys here are good at one or two, but there are more out there than you could ever imagine. A lot of them have trial versions. A lot of them have online courses that are free. A lot of them have videos on YouTube, just like we do here, that you can go and look at and start learning a new system. Um, the long and short of it, guys, is that some companies, unfortunately, are not going to come back. Some companies are not going to come back with all their staff. Um, you never know where you may end up after this layoff. You don't know what system the next company you're going to may use. Um, if you're really familiar with System X and the next company is predominantly using System Y, even just having a rudimentary knowledge of System Y can give you a huge leg up on getting hired. Um, it can also make that transition a lot easier. There's no negatives to learning more than one system. Um, if anything, it makes you more versatile. It can keep you, you know, some systems are really good at doing one thing and not so good at another. Very few systems out there are good at absolutely everything. So having knowledge of, oh, if I'm doing a job and it's not working out here, oh, that system has really good fourth axis capability. I might know that I could use that system instead. It's just a good thing to know. And there's really no downside. The next thing you should do, if you got some time, some of you guys, myself included, are, we were raised in the CAD CAM generation. Um, I know how to program decently well with something like a CAD CAM system, but if you put G code out in front of me and told me write a program in G code, I would be hard pressed to do it. I will admit that freely. Um, I can edit G code pretty well, but in terms of writing programs in G code, I'm not too sure. There are a few at least I know of, if you Google them, free G-code emulators online. It's an incredibly useful skill to be able to write in G-code and edit in G-code. Take some time, try to write some programs, try to modify some programs, and run them in these G-code emulators so you can see more what different codes are doing in a program. Um, this has saved me a lot when I have a program that's not working properly and I know to change G code around, or I know to change uh, my height offset in the program, or how to use loops. Um, all these things are things that you can use in G code without your CAD CAM in order to make your programs more efficient. So getting familiar with it while you have some time now, why not? It's, it's literally learning how to be a better machinist. And it's something you can do right at home from the you know, most low budget laptop you could imagine. I'm sure there's some out there that you could do it from your phone. Um, it's just a good thing to know. As well, this is kind of the time, another thing you can be doing 
is brushing up on skills tangentially related to machining. Um, some of you guys may be like me uh, or like, you know, you, you really enjoy being a machinist. Machining is your first love, but you want to be able to take your skills a little bit higher, maybe get into um, the programming department as opposed to being on the floor. Maybe you want to move into sales. Maybe you want to move into management. Maybe you want to uh, move into more of the shop hierarchy that way. This is the time to start learning things like accounting. Um, I, we, I know guys don't want to admit it, but once you get to a certain point in a company, a lot of your time is spent doing purchase orders. It's spent doing budgets. It's spent running times per job. There are a ton of free resources out there where you can get a better handle on how to do these things. You know, a lot of guys have dreams of opening a shop someday or having their own shop, but have no idea how to pay taxes or have no idea how, um, you know, in their state or provinces, tax codes work. It's good information to know, even if you're not going to use it today. Um, even looking into something like how to buy a building, how to apply for financing, even if you're not going to do it right now, they can help when you go to do these things. You already have that background, so you don't have to learn everything at once. You have time now. If you have time now, use that time to help propel yourself forward in these endeavors. Uh, learning how to use something like QuickBooks, learning how to use a shop software. These are all things that aren't gonna be wasted by spending time on doing them now. Another thing you can be doing, and this is, I mean, unfortunately not one of the most pleasant things that we always can do, is update your resume. As I said before, not every company is gonna come back the way we hope they're going to. Um, not every company is gonna hire back all the staff that they previously had. I hope that you guys all get your jobs back and you can go back to work and everything is great, but preparing to go out and look for a new job never hurts. Taking this time to update your resume with all your relevant qualifications, all the systems you know, you know, I, I guarantee if you guys have been in a job for more than a couple of years, your resume is out of date. Taking some time right now to go through and update that. So if you do have to go for another job, it's one last thing to get out of the way. It, there's no downside. It, there really is no downside. The last thing you should be doing on your time off, and I call it time off, I know you guys are not looking at, sitting at home is not really feeling like time off to anybody, but while you have the time, is take some time to get things done that you don't usually have time to do, completely unrelated to your work. Maybe you wanted to put a garden in the backyard, maybe you had a cabinet you wanted to build, maybe you wanted to start on uh, demolitioning part of your house, whatever it may be. Taking the time to get those things done while you have some time around the house, is no downside. Um, at the end of the day, it's gonna reduce stress when you do go back to work because you now have all these other things out of the way that you wanted to do. It's gonna free up more time down the road. So if you have time, do take time to work on your own projects. It helps keep you in a routine. Um, you know, I know guys right now who are laid off who have their own projects at home who work at them like a full-time job. Uh, but they get up at 7 a.m., they start doing what they're doing at eight, they take a lunch, and then they stop at four keeping themselves in that routine and keeping themselves goal oriented really will help them when they go back to work. So again, you know, it's, it's about keeping the routine and keeping yourself productive so that you feel better, you feel productive. And when you go, do go back to work or do have to go look for a job, it's not such a big culture shock again. Okay. Again, these are just some suggestions. I'd love to hear in the comments below, write what you guys are doing. If you're laid off, um, you know, let me know what you guys are learning. Let me know what systems that you would recommend people learning. Um, let me know some projects you guys are working on, you know. Every bit that we can give to each other to help out is just gonna help our industry rebound when this is finally all under wraps. So let's do our best to help each other and sharing in the comments is one way to do that, okay? Thank you very much for watching, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe below if you wanna see more videos. You guys have a great day, take care.